Okay. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I want to present you the system integration and analysis. The first presentation was about Suricata, but uh, I did both presentation in Madrid, and people are more interested in the second one. And for this reason, I try to explain this second presentation. Let me introduce me a little bit, very quickly. And I am Jose Manuel Roman. I have 17 years of experience. I'm certified trainer, and I have also security certification. And the other co-author is one of my engineers. You can see he has experience with Microtech and other vendors. Something about uh, our company. We, we have fiber optic key project. We deploy in Spain a lot of projects of fiber optic. We give level three support, follow the sun, micro -tit certification, and our specialty is integration. There is a special offer for assistance to the moon. There is a 20% of discount in the service. Okay, let's go to the presentation. In this case, in this case we have a problem. Okay, our problem is we have a lot of events, you know, as system administrator, there is occasion that your network, there is a lot of packets, there is a lot of protocols, flows, and so on, and you can control the network. The symptom, we have multiple incidents, we have DDoS, attack, we have problem with a spammer, we had problem with UDP, with DNS, and so on. We feel it's a feeling of lack of control over the network. My solution in this presentation is a centralized system to collect, normalize, visualize and analysis the network. This is the agenda. We'll begin with the architecture. And next, ELK. And next, we continue with this system. I think this, this kind of system are very usual in every network. And we finish with a big picture of this kind of integration in our networks. Okay, let's go with ELK. What is ELK? ELK is an um, acronym for Elastic Search, Log Stash, and Kibana. The first of this three system is Elasticsearch. It's a search engine. It's based on Lucent. And it provides a search engine in real time. And with output with JSON documents. It's programming in Java. And it's open source. It's Apache license. Characteristic is distributed, scalable, and highly available. There is a lot of architecture to put in a cluster and so on. You can escalate without limits. 
This tool permits us real-time search and real-time analysis. That is the purpose of this presentation. Here is very important. I put some characteristics there from the website of Elasticsearch. It's very important we can make full text search and numeric search. For example, IPv4. For example, geo IP localization and so on. The second element in our architecture is Logstash. It's a collector and permit centralize all our infrastructure. We can concentrate in one point all our data. And the most important part is we can normalize this data that are around our network and we can manage in a centralized manner. The elements of Logstash are three. The first one is input, collect data from a variety of sources like HTTP, like log, and so on. The second one is filter. With this element, we parse and process and enrich the data. And the last one is output. We push data to, for instance, database, elastic search, and so on. And the last one is the pretty thing of this element are the Kibana to present this information. I think this presentation is very important, not only for techies, it's also important for maker the decision because you can present a lot of information to people and it's not so important that these people understand technology, understand TCP or UDP, it's more important that these people can do decision based in this tool. Here there is the big picture with some, some of the elements of the presentation. We have on the left the microtic and we have two services, the radius and the syslog. We can, we can put the output of radius and syslog to log stash, and after the normalization part, we can use elastic search to search everything inside this data. And on the Sorry. On the right, we have Kibana to show very pretty this information to everyone. Okay, and here is the architecture for our presentation. We have several services. I think it's a normal system. We have a an authentication system, we have syslog, we have a monitoration system, and we have maybe a little bit more exotic NetFlow. But I suppose if you are here, you can use every of this system, okay? You can see in the picture the free radius, for example, after we can see the, the configuration inside the Mikrotik, and we can connect with the Mikrotik and with the ELK. It's similar for the rest of the system. If you know more or less this tool, 
you can see there is more link, for instance, between free radius and syslog, and so on. Okay, move on to the authentication system. We use, normally in our wireless service provider, we use Radius. I think here everyone knows Radius. I, I only put this for information. The most important is MicroTIS system support Radius not only for authentication in hotspot, also in PPP, normally PPP o OE, and wireless, and also for login. You can, you can see, use UDP with those ports. Normal operation in radius is, we can split in three types. I think everyone here knows this information. We have the dialing user, we have our NAS, and in the last part, we have our radius server. In this case, free radius. This is a normal working to establish a session, for instance, PPPoE or wireless, with the different step to authenticate. Here there is a topology we use normally in hotels, we use in airports, and so on. But the important thing here, you have the configuration, you can choose PPP, hotspot, uh, login, DHCP, etc. But the most important thing, if you are using this, this kind of tools, there is a who use here uh, free radius. Okay, you know the, the the tool. Okay. Can you explain this part of? <laughs> I think this part in my, in Madrid was a catastrophe. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the period information that... Your name? Your name My is name is Hassan Asrari. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. This is the uh, IP address of the micro TV. We want to connect with the uh, radius beyond peering. Mm -hmm. And the uh, packet type the access request. It means the packet uh, forward to the radius. We see some moment. Yes. We see here. Uh, sorry, to, sorry. <laughs> this is the calling station. It's a MAC address. Uh, basically, it's a layer two, and it's a MAC address. Uh, it's uh, no uh, calling uh, station ID. Uh, and the uh, call station ID, maybe, is, uh, this is the method of the uh, MAC addresses. And uh, the uh, NAS port and uh, NAS port IP addresses. Uh, this is the Mikrotik IP addresses we want to connect to mm -hmm. uh, Mikrotik. And uh, this is the uh, notification uh, method of the notification we want to connect to the uh, radio server. Uh, this is the uh, based on the wireless. And the server type is the frame it users. And uh, NAS for type is a wireless 802.11. It's based on uh, wireless technology. Thank you very much. Thank you too. You can you can see here there is a lot of information, and we'll process this information with uh, ELK because, for example, here we have a lot of information. We thought we have the IP address. We have the type of service in this case in this case is a wireless and so on 
how, how can I do it? Okay, here is the input. We, we saw some slide after. You can see in this case, in this case is a radius. And the most important part, I don't know if it's clear in the slide, but here we normalize all this field. And we can use after this field. And in the last part, we use the output to put this information to elastic search. Okay, this is the first system. The second system is the centralized log. Okay, I suppose there is a lot of people who use this kind of system. Do you know this system? Yeah. These are the, the characteristics of RC's log. Basically, permit send IP send logs by IP networks. Support encryption and timestamp. And the most important thing is we can log in directly in database. This is powerful because after we can use those databases to make queries. The topology, we have our system. In our case is microtic and we can put the output in several other systems. In this case, we can use Elasticsearch. Here, we have the architecture. We have the microtic routers. And all of them send the information to the six log. After, we normalize with log stash and we send the information to elastic search and the last part we use the dashboard to see this information these queries the configuration of uh, microtic is trivial you know you need to uh, activate a new action with uh, the remote IP address. And when we add new topics, we set up the action remote. For me, this, this is very important because we can send a lot of information to this engine and we can process a lot of information with this syslog. Okay, let's go to other of the biggest system in our networks is the monitoring. It's also trivial to set up. You only need to put this command you use in everywhere. I think I don't need to explain it. In this situation, I use Thavis. Normally, people use Thavis or Cactis. It's a normal system in our networks. But why is so important? Because this kind of tools permit us to send this information to other kind of database. For example, in FluxDB. It's a database 
special for time serials. With this system, we can integrate the monitoring system inside the rest of the dashboard and so on. And not only the data, it's very important because we can integrate the events, the alarms. Okay, and to finish, uh, we will see NetFlow. It's a network protocol created by Cisco and permit us collect information about IP traffic. Here is the architecture. It's very similar. In this case, we need a NetFlow collector. The NetFlow collector send the information to the storage and we can analyze. Trivial to configure it is a little bit more difficult, but only two commands in Microtik. You can see there. In this case, we need a collector. For example, I use this one. And when we collect this kind of logs, we can send this output to Elasticsearch in JSON format. We can see here the, the flow and how to send the log to the Elasticsearch. And in the last part, we can see the, the product of all this information. We can see in this case a dashboard with the GeoIP location. But not only with the GeoIP location, we can find, for example, all UDP traffic to the port 53. We can search all traffic for NTP and so on. Here, I, I digress a little bit because I think it's very important additional resources. Grafana is the alternative to Kibana. It's also very powerful tool to graphic. We are speaking about InfluxDB. It's a database special for time series. And a collector like Lockstash is FluentD. Why I do this, this presentation? Normally, we have level three support, and we haven't tools to manage big networks. We are speaking about clients with 5,000 customers, and with three or four ISP provider, and this kind of networks. In this kind of networks, you need this kind of tools, because only with independent tools, it's very difficult to identify this kind of events. Thank you very much. Do you have some questions? Any questions?